Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 15th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Interesting diary this weekend by Didier about hash collisions in Excel spreadsheets. So the problem here are password protected Excel spreadsheets, which aren't encrypted. That's an often a misconception. It's really sort of more about preventing accidental changes and such uh, to Excel spreadsheets where these passwords are being used. As a result, the implementation isn't really all that super secure. You can actually just more or less remove them. And uh, Didier is also writing about some of the tools that he wrote to do that. But there are, of course, cases where you would like to analyze a particular spreadsheet without modifying it, for example, for some malware analysis. And yes, you can pretty easily brute force these passwords, but there is an additional trick that Didier is using in his latest tool that doesn't require a classic brute force. What DDA is taking advantage of here is that the actual verifier code that's being used to verify if the password is correct or not is really just a 16-bit hash and actually one of those bits is fixed. So you really only have 32,768 different options here and that's what DDA is doing here. DDA basically has passwords that match every one of these hashes built into his plugin biff.py script. That's a plugin for the Oli dump tool to analyze Oli documents like Excel spreadsheets. So the end result is that even password protected spreadsheets, you're now able to analyze rather quickly without having to modify the spreadsheet that you're actually analyzing. And on Friday, I noticed in our weblogs some attacks against the PHP Netty framework. Uh, that's at least how I think it's uh, being pronounced. Now, uh, the vulnerability being exploited here is far from new. It's from 2020. And we have sort of seen sporadic attacks against this vulnerability pretty much ever since the patch and was released, the vulnerability became known. These latest exploits are essentially installing a simple denial of service agent. So an infected system would be turned into an amplifier for a denial of service attack. Oddly enough, didn't spot any sort of crypto component here. Some crypto miner, of course, would be another uh, typical uh, thing being installed. And the installation mechanism here very much reminded me of a lot of these uh, crypto coin miners. Overall, just be careful with these frameworks. Keep them up to date. This particular vulnerability, probably nothing too much to worry about. But uh, all of these frameworks have had vulnerabilities in the past and it can be sometimes a little bit tricky to keep them updated across different PHP versions and such. So definitely, you know, stay up to date. So in case a vulnerability is being discovered, you only have to do a small incremental update and not a major update for one of these frameworks. And last year, Squarespace took over Google's domain registrar business. So it, if you had a domain that was registered via domains.google.com, well, uh, that particular domain is now being managed by Squarespace. And you, if you were affected by this, you probably got multiple emails. Uh, I know I myself also had some domains that were affected by this transition. The problem appears to be that last week, a number of domains that were transferred from Google to Squarespace were compromised. What happened was, and this in particular focused on uh, cryptocurrency related domains, attackers took over the Squarespace account and then used their access to modify the domain, meaning pointing things like MX records, mail servers to different IP addresses. It's not totally clear how they did it, 
but uh, one suggestion is that this may be caused by default settings that were being implemented as domain was being transferred from Google to Squarespace, not being really set up all that securely. So you may have, for example, had two-factor authentication set up with Google. Well, as the domain was now uh, transferred to Squarespace, they automatically provisioned a Squarespace account for you if you haven't had one yet, and that account did not use two-factor authentication. So if you were affected by this transition, and in general, uh, no matter the registrar you're using, double-check that your credentials are secure. I'll link uh, to a PDF uh, that's hosted on GitHub. It's a little bit of weird setup, but looks legitimate, uh, where they also go over a couple other parameters uh, like contributor accounts and such that Squarespace uses that you as a Google user may not really be aware of and that's something that you need uh, to nail down. Well, and this is it uh, for uh, today. I'm, of course, this week here at Sands Fire in Washington, D.C. We'll do a brief a keynote on Monday evening about sort of the history of Internet Storm Center and uh, sort of how attacks evolved over the last 25 years. It should be available online. I will, uh, if I get a link and if it's available online uh, for the public, post a link on the Internet Storm Center website on Monday. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.